Welcome back to Autotechnic, and we're back on the restoration of my 1979 Centurion jet boat. Now, today's video is going to be a bit of a range of emotions. Definitely very bittersweet. We're going to hit a couple big milestones, which I've definitely been looking forward to on the boat today, but also the project's going to come to a stop. However, it's for something that's pretty cool, and I'll explain that here in a few minutes. Well, we got to rewind all the way back to the beginning of this build when we started to do this work solely to replace the stringers. And that is why you'll find that the boat is off of the trailer and on just three jack stands at this point. And that was to enable proper support of the hole so I could cut out all the stringers, get the new ones in and maintain the proper shape of the hole. Now I have left the boat in here in the shop on the jack stands because having them there made it really easy to get the boat level when I put in the new stringers. So A, they're supported properly be it was level, but maintaining that level made it a lot easier to get my pump set and my engine mounted. And essentially once all those items were dictated and done, I no longer really needed the boat to be level, but I left it in here and I was able to get it raised up and that allowed me to finish all that bottom work, which I did on the last video. But now, since all that bottom work is done, everything's set and mocked up on the boat and level, well, frankly, it doesn't need to be here anymore. So as much as I'm looking forward to get the boat on the trailer, the physical act of getting on the trailer is something I've not been looking forward to. I am going to have to play musical cars, musical trailers, musical equipment. I kind of have quite a mess to deal with in order to get this accomplished. For one, the boat's on the jack stands. We need to get it down, lowered, and on some dollies so we can move it around. But it's also backwards. So we're going to have to get the boat spun around. But I don't have enough space in my shop to spin it around. I only have about 18 feet between this car which happens to be torn apart and on jack stands and the benches. Now that car I can move out. There's still not enough space, which I will have to move that car out because it's partially blocking the door for the trailer. So I'll have to move that car out in the driveway, which you see I'll have to move my son Chevelle. So it just snowballs. On top of it, I need to steal the dollies that are any the casters for said car and get those set up underneath the boat so I can first get the boat out of here. And I also have to contend with the bottom part of my lift because that makes life a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to start by getting some of the stuff rearranged and get some space cleared out. And my main priority or goal with this is to show you guys how I got the boat back on the trailer, which you guys could use at home if you're getting your boat pulled off of a trailer or if you have to go back on. I figure it's useful information that some of you guys would like to see. And that's also another reason if we fast or rewind back a little bit why I went through mock-up and then pulled everything back out of the boat because I didn't want to be doing this with an engine in it because I would have just been setting myself up for certain failure. So with that guys, I'm going to go and get everything rearranged and I'll bring you guys back in a little bit here. And once we start focusing on the boat a little bit more. We got some space to work with. I cleared out most everything from the inside of the boat to get as much weight out of it as I could. Fuel tanks are staying in because that is the best place I have to store those things. They tired of tripping over those when they're around the shop. And you see we got the old M5 out and got the dollies out from underneath of it. And got the boat lowered down as low as it will go on these existing jack stands. Now, I will be honest with you guys, I have taken the boat out of the shop once, that's when I turned it around, but I did put it on the trailer because I had to take it to Fiberlay and they used their camera to scan the gel coat and that's how I got the match inside the bilge. I say this because I've already done this once, meaning I've already got the boat turned around, I've already put it on the trailer once, and to be honest with you guys, the method that I used last time was not the best. I had some issues and the way I went about it, I took my jack stands 
I had them just sitting on those dollies, one on each side on the rear. Again, everything as low as I could, and the same for the front, and just gently wheeled it out into the driveway where I have enough room to turn it around and wheel it back in. It sounds great, however, the wheels on those dollies do not agree with my driveway, which is pretty rough and exposed and all of the cracks. And I did have some issues with the jack stand sliding out and those dollies kicking out up onto the bow and it ended up being far more of a hassle than it was really worth. And I don't wanna go that route again, fearful that I'll do some damage to the bottom side of the boat now that we got everything all fixed. So I was kind of out here kicking around some ideas and I got to thinking, what if I were to be a little bit smarter and take one of those dollies with those blocks that I had on the jack stands, pulled some measurements on them on how high that is versus the keel to the outside strakes. I got plenty of moving blankets, plenty of foam pads to protect everything. I think it's gonna work out. I'll be able to get some padding onto those blocks. They're just giving me just enough height so that way the keel's off the ground, but it'll be close. I can just set the boat directly onto these dollies and eliminate the jack stands. I'll have more surface area. It should be on there a lot nicer. Center of gravity is lower. And I really hope that it's gonna ease things when I get it onto the really terrible driveway to get it turned around. So the two rears, I think width-wise, if I put these on kind of like so, it's gonna hit the outer chine and that lifting straight there where it's essentially level. I'll be a couple inches from the keel to the bottom. So it's gonna be really, really close. The front, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to space things up and how much space I need. So I'm gonna set you guys down, get that all rearranged and figure it out. And hopefully I'll get the boat out and turned around. And also before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I need to take care of the trailer because it's been sitting out underneath a tree. It's sappy, it's super dirty. So I get the pressure washer out. I'm gonna wash that off, get it cleaned up in preparation to getting the boat back on there. making great progress so far. The blocks on the back, the moving blankets, shimmed it with a piece of half inch plywood is working very good. It's very stable back there. On the front, I ended up just using one moving blanket straight on a dolly. So we've been able to move the boat back to where you can see that my dolly is hitting my lift. Now I need to take the floor jack, jack it back up and get that dolly moved on the back side of that lift so that way I can continue pushing this boat out and finally get this thing turned around.
we're getting there, getting closer. Now, let me tell you, using the center blocks and having this lower to the ground without using the jack stands was tremendously, significantly better than when I used the jack stands. However, incredibly nerve wracking. Normally, I'm not one that kind of gets the nerves that affects me too much, but I can tell you, moving this around the driveway, these are starting to move just a little bit and shift, and I have the pump intake just dangling. I mean, it is just inches from the ground, and obviously, or not obviously, but a little insight, the way my brain works, I was immediately jumping to the worst case scenario. I was imagining one of these just popping out, the boat falling down, hitting the strakes, popping the intake. It's just the way my mind runs and I'm paranoid. So definitely took my time just cautiously getting the boat moved around and turned around. Like I said, incredibly nerve wracking, but we got it and no issues. None of them slid out, had full control, got it spun around, was able to do it by myself. And trailer's washed up, cleaned up, got all the sap off of it, and it's ready to get these two married back to each other. So I think my plan of attack to get the boat back onto the trailer is kind of get it back to how it was on the jack stands back here at the back. Um, probably use those taller jack stands to get it as high as I can. Probably use those cinder blocks again to get it high. I pulled some measurements off the back of the boat and on the bunks to see how high I need it, and I do need that height. And then I'll throw the one jack stand back into the front, but I think I'm gonna experiment and see how far back I can get it and still have the boat be stable. And that's gonna allow me to get the trailer underneath the boat before I remove that one jack stand. Now I can support the front of the boat with my cherry picker. Um, I can rig something up. I got a big beam up there. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, I've not decided which I'm gonna chase after. I think I'm just gonna get the boat on the jack stands as high as I can in the rear front jack stand as far back as I can keeping the boat stable start sliding the trailer in and obviously I'll get the trailer back to that first jack stand I think once I get to that point I'm going to reevaluate and come up with a plan moving forward it just depends on how much boat I get onto the trailer so let's get to it Got the trailer backed in up to the forward most jack stand and stopped there. I jacked the boat up, took the jack stand out, and now I'm laying on the bunks right about where my hand is on the front. At the back, I kept my dollies, threw in the jack stands, and this is going to allow me to shift the boat forward, well, side to side, and help it slide onto the trailer. Now, I did try to push the boat onto the bunks further forward by myself. I can pick the back of the boat up but I cannot push it forward. And that's because there's such a small amount of surface area onto the bunks you can see there that is just not gonna happen. Rather than take out the cherry picker or deal with that beam, I went with the easiest route and fastest because it's getting late in the day and I want this boat on. Threw a strap on my bow eyelet, come along to the receiver on my truck and I'm just gonna winch the boat on. Um, this is much in the similar way that I did it the first time except a little bit more refined. So I know this works and it's easy and I can get it done here at home by myself. So set the camera down and I'm gonna start winching and I'll just periodically come back here and check on these jack stands to make sure I'm not gonna lose one. And once we get you know, the boat probably up to about here on the trailer, we don't even need those and we can just bring it all the way on. All right, let's see if we can't get this thing pulled onto the trailer all the way without any fuss or hassle. Take it easy. Now I can see that the outer strake on this driver's side over here isn't over on the bunk. So it's causing the boat to twist a little bit, but they widen out. So here soon enough, we should be able to get that over the edge of that bunk. Whoa, almost lost the jack stand here. Woohoo! All right. So I guess that's just kind of how it's gonna be. It's 
kind of riding on just that one jack stand. This one's pretty free, but the strap that we have on the truck is kind of keeping the boat from the bow from tipping up. So we'll just keep going with it. Just kind of letting it go where it wants to go. Give our yeah, we're we're off this jack stand on this back corner. It's just along for the ride. So it's definitely got it a bit of a twist to it. But I think we're gonna need to get this much further on before I can pop it over. So we'll keep going. Hasn't gone wrong yet. I think we're pretty safe at this point. I think we got enough of the boat on. That guy's doing nothing. Can we straighten this thing out though? That's the question. I was gonna pull it off this one. Did we get it? I got it. So, like I mentioned, that back jack stand is doing nothing, so I just popped it out. So we're really only on one, but we got most of the weight on the trailer. The boat's coming on straight now. Smooth sailing from here. All right, so use the longer chain, got another grab, and I think it's all smooth sailing from this point forward. Almost there. And have to get an, yet another bite on the come along. go that's right about there got it feels good back on the trailer I have to get that guy out and give it a little hip check to get it onto the bunks Got it. Oh, feels great. Back on, ready to move on. Well, a little bit labor intensive, a little sketchy, but all in all, it wasn't too bad and successfully got the boat back onto the trailer by myself with really no fancy tools or equipment. So the next thing we're gonna take care of is finally, I am going to get this plastic wrap off of the boat. Now, I think I put this on on probably the first, first or second video that we did on this jet boat. And I can't tell you how grateful I am because the top of it is beat up very badly. There's a gel coat that's spilled on it. There's fiberglass resin on it. Scuff marks for me jumping in and out of the boat all the time. And for the minimal amount of money I spent buying this wrap, it really has done a great job of taking all the abuse of me working on the boat 
and preserving the gel coat that we have. And now that we're pretty much done with all that rough and tough work and it's essentially final assembly that we have left, this stuff's coming off. So another perk of this crash trap that I put on here that was um, not part of the plan but worked out great is overspray. Anytime I did any of the gel coat work, I didn't really have to mask the boat and worry about overspray. This crash wrap took the brunt of all of that also. So once we're completely done with this boat, it's going to take a pretty minor polish and clean up on the outside to get the gel coat looking as good as I want. So, and this original gel coat on the outside of the boat is actually in pretty good shape. It has its, it has its war marks and its scars, but it polished up pretty good and it looks quite nice with no huge blemishes. So I'm excited to get all this off and show you guys just how she is and all of her glory. Now, I don't know if it's ironic or fate, but right before I found out the stringers were bad on this boat, I actually went through and polished the whole thing and detailed it. And the boat never even saw the water after that. I was getting it ready for the season and this thing was faded and oxidized. Hadn't seen any love in a long time. So I spent a weekend just going to town on it, getting it looking sharp. And lo and behold, once I got done with that, that's when I was starting to get the engine ready to go. And I found out that I had yet another failed thrust bearing. And ultimately that's what's, well, spun us all the way up to this point of the project. So all that work to polish it and detail it, <laughs> to just crawl around it for two years and beat it up. I really got to say, if you guys are going to be doing a big project on your boat and you're going to be crawling around it, similar to what I did here, I cannot recommend this crash trap enough. It has done such a great job of keeping everything protected and clean. Um, very grateful that I did it. So spend a little bit of money and a little bit of time it takes to put on and you will be so thankful you did at the end of your project. All right all off i'm gonna spend a couple minutes getting this wiped down a few of the a little bit of the tape residue off and then i'll probably clean out the inside of the boat bring you guys in and give you a closer look all right guys there we are with it all wiped down all of the plastics off toss the seats in because why not and i can tell you what i forgot how good this thing looked especially for it wearing all of its original gel coat it's looking really nice, really sharp. There is a little bit of overspray that came out when I was doing the gel coat, primarily from like this area and where the fuel caps are. So I'll pop those out. Well, actually, when I'm completely done with all the work on the boat, I'm gonna run a polisher all over it once again, just to make sure it's in tip top shape. That will take care of that little bit of overspray. But that plastic did a phenomenal job of protecting everything. And now that you guys can see this gel coat, you can see why. It's in just really, really good shape. Wanted to protect it, keep it looking as nice as I could. And it's really motivating getting this thing on the trailer. It just really wants me to get this project all wrapped up. You can see the bilge, how that all ties in. Now, one thing to note, if you're really paying attention on the boat, there's four colors on the outside, and I only did three colors on the inside of the bilge. I'm missing this dark brown. If you guys are really paying attention, the engine is actually painted this dark brown and that's the reason why I did that. I was trying to minimize how much of the dark, ugly brown we have on the boat, but all tied together and looking very sharp. 
All right, the boat's back on the trailer, but we're still not out of the woods. I still have a very big and long list of stuff to do on the boat before it's back in the water. Let me take a minute and run you through what is left to do to this project. One of the main things we have to take care of is this back of the transom. I need to finish filling all these holes for all the water outlets so I can drill my new ones. So I'm gonna have to fiberglass those in, get them flush and do the gel coat work to get those to disappear. While we're at it, we're gonna eliminate this hole here I need to get rid of this epoxy that leaked out. I have a very good plan for that. And actually a couple of these holes here were for the old electric fuel pump. They gotta go. But while we're back here fussing around, you can see that I've uncovered some old hidden damage up here at the top. And that was covered with some paint. I wiped it off with acetone. Need to get that fixed. And this big alley down here, you can see that that's gotta get addressed. I need to make sure that that's structurally sound in that corner. We know on the inside it's good, but out here, I don't know how deep I'll have to dig. Need to get that out repaired and re-gel coated and that's really why when I was doing this front bow on the bottom on the last video I was really trying to save and preserve this gel coat because I know that I have to do these repairs back here once all that's done fuel tanks we need to get those polished now I am concerned because they put some pretty big scratches in them when they prepped those for the fiberglass to go on it so it's going to take quite a bit of work of sanding to get those down to get them polished up but we're going to give it a good shot so we need to take care of that the pump, I need to get that taken all the way apart and, well, need to get it painted again. It's been kind of gotten beaten up from being moved around, going through all this work. Plus, it's just a hair off matching the powder coat on the place inverter parts. So there's multiple reasons there why I'm going to repaint the pump. As for up here on the boat, we need to finalize all of our seat mounts. We have to put carpet in it and the biggie is electrical. We have to get all of the electrical ran which just like all the control cables, I have grand plans for that. So it's not merely just running the electrical back here and hook it back up. We're basically gonna kind of restructure how the electrical was. I don't want to get into rewiring the whole boat, but I do want to clean everything up and make it much, much more sanitary. Well guys, we've had a good run at it. I've been on this project for about two and a half years and this is the juncture of the video where I have to tell you that unfortunately this project's gotta stop. Well, I wouldn't say stop, it's got a pause. Now I know what you guys are thinking, why in the world would we pause or stop work on this jet boat? We've spent so much time working on it, we've gotten it this far. I did just rattle off the list of work that I have left, and it's still fairly substantial, but yet we're so close to getting this thing on the water. And you guys probably are wondering, what in the world? What is a good enough reason for me to stop working on the jet boat and move on to a different project? Well, the reason why that's gonna be happening is this right over here. I present to you a 1999 Ferrari F355 GTS. Now this car is in the shop because it is due for its major service, which essentially is a timing belt replacement. However, on this particular car, that's gonna require us to completely remove the entire engine and drivetrain from the back end of the car. Yeah, bit of a pivot going from a big block powered domestic jet boat to this little Italian exotic car, but really there's a lot of similarities in between these and our performance rule that we're used to in jet boats. Just to name a few on this car, it's a three and a half liter V8, which is 213 cubic inches. It makes 375 horsepower naturally aspirated on pump gas, but it has what we would consider exotic in the jet boat world. This thing comes from the factory with titanium connecting rods, factory dry sump oiling system, five valves per cylinder, and eight independent throttle bodies, one for each cylinder on the engine with an 8,500 RPM red line. So even if you're not a Ferrari guy, there is a lot of cool technology and cool stuff that are built into these cars in the factory that, heck, if you're a gearhead car guy, it's all stuff that we like. So, why a Ferrari? Well, gotta give you guys a little bit of background here and this will all make a little bit more sense. Up until recently, I had a 20 year career as a technician in various new car dealerships. Now I spent the first 10 years or half of that working in various BMW dealerships across the Midwest. And the last 10 years, I happened to find myself working in a Ferrari dealership. Now I went in as an entry level technician at Ferrari at the beginning, 10 years later, when I decided to walk away from the brand, I was the shop foreman of that shop. I was a Ferrari master technician. And I also had earned the accolades of becoming the world's best Ferrari technician, a title given to me from the Ferrari factory in a competition that I took place with 12 other technicians from around the world in Italy, very significant honor and really this is my bread and butter. This is what I did daily, and this is really what I specialize in. Everything else that you've seen me do around the shop up to this point, that's all been my hobby for 20 years, and this is really what I'd consider my profession. 
So this really is kind of starting a new chapter where I'm gonna be working on these cars and sharing with you all my knowledge, the technical aspects of the cars, and give you some stories and insight the behind the scenes of all my years as a master technician working for Ferrari. So don't fret guys, this does not mean the end of the jet boat build or the videos on the jet boat. There's still a ton of work to do to it. The only thing that's changing is, well, I'm really no longer able to focus 100% of my attention on jet boat, which I've done in the past. Now I'm, it's gonna be a bit divided. So we're still gonna have all the same great content on this channel. We're just adding in this whole new element with Ferrari. But back to the jet boat, you know, the things that I need to do next before we can do the final reassembly is we need to get the fuel tanks polished and we need to get the pump painted. I need to get all the aluminum for all the engine mounts, the rails, everything that we cut during our mock-up to get the engine in. I need to get all that aluminum polished out. So all those tasks I can do in conjunction with why I'm getting this Ferrari serviced. I'm gonna get all those loose odds and ends taken care of on the jet boat. Of course, there's gonna be videos on all of that. So that way, when all of that stuff is done, all the loose ends are tied up, we can bring the boat back in here and we can get her assembled and back onto the water. All right, guys, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think of this 355 and the project that I have ahead. Heck, if you have any questions that you wanna ask me for my time working at Ferrari and my experiences, jump in there, let me know. I'll do my best to answer it and kind of, you know, peek that curtain back and give you guys a little bit of insight to the world of Ferrari. And don't fret, jet boat's not going anywhere. We're gonna keep working on it, so keep an eye out for those videos. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate your support. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share it with your buddies, and we'll see you on the next one.